Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today I thought we would do a kind of a get ready with me because I'm getting ready to go somewhere. And also the things that I got at the Sephora sale. I felt like I bought a lot at the Sephora sale. I mean, my bank account does, but I, it was more, it was different <laughs> than it usually is. I had two orders. I meant to get three. I was watching a movie last night and totally got distracted. And before I knew it, it was 12.05 five minutes after the end of the sale. So I was going to get some shampoo and I wanted to get a concealer that, um, Makeup Forever concealer that Alana Davison's always talking about. I thought, yeah, I'll give that a try. But I missed it. So I ended up getting sunscreens and a bunch of things. I've already shown you the YSLs. Um, well, not a bunch of things, actually. So for makeup, we're putting on just about everything I got. We're going to start with the foundation. This is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing. This is the first one they came out with and the color is right there. It's quartz. So I'll talk as I'm putting this on and I'm going to do my fingers. So I had bought in the past couple of months probably four bottles of this foundation, but in the new one, the Radiant Lifting, because I could not find a color. The first color was pretty close, but it, there was something slightly gray about it. And I have this particular foundation in silk, which I should have returned when I bought it. I really wish Sephora would go back to, you know, a year to make a mistake, or, you know, not even a year, six months, well, a year in that case. I've had it for a long time and I thought, well, I can make it work. And I really, I just couldn't make it work. And so I threw that out and I got this color. And I thought, this is a pretty decent color for me because it's rather neutral. And it's a good depth of tone. But in the past couple of weeks, I have gotten a little bit of color. Even though I do wear sunscreen, every day and I try to be careful once in a while I make a mistake like I made a mistake with my neck uh, when I reapplied my sunscreen all over but I forgot my neck and I got a little sunburn on my neck but sunscreen isn't you know a hundred percent you're still going to get a little bit of color and so I feel this is the slightest bit too pale for me which is not a problem I wanted to show you what it looked like but when I go to use this, I can use the Drunk Elephant, I think it's called Bronzy or Bronzini or something like that, just to deepen it up a little bit. And even if I don't do that, I can bronze it up and it'll eventually get there. But I wanted you to see what this color quartz looks like on my camera, on my monitor here, i.e. my computer. This is a dry blender. It looks like there's a huge difference, but in real life, it's not too bad. And I'm just making sure my blend is even. Okay, very, very good. The reason I decided to do this one instead of the new one is I have a lot of radiant foundations, but I don't have much that are matte. And this is, well, not exactly matte, but I figure I'm going to be radiant anyway. And this one I could kind of manipulate. So if I were going to wear it at night, I wouldn't need my sunscreen. I wouldn't start as shiny and I can get a closer to matte look with this one. I do need some bronzing. I did not get this NARS cream. This is in Laguna at the sale, but it is now at Sephora. So I'm just going to pick some up on this brush. I feel like the brush is better for me with this because it's a little too dark for me. And I just pretty much take it all off. I'm working it into the bristles instead of having the product at the top of the bristles and very, very lightly, super lightly, apparently not lightly enough, go to the high points. It smells like coconuts. It smells like summer, my friends. And down here, just to help, not with the shading, with all my junk down here, but to get the neck and the face to relate to each other a little bit better. It's huge improvement, but I need to blend the forehead a little bit more. Now, I usually 
go in with eyeshadow. And you know what? I'm going to do the same thing. So here's the deal. Mel Thompson recommended this. This is Pretty Baby. It's Tom Ford. And she said it was worth having. And she also said the same kind of things that I think about Tom Ford, which is you look at them and they all seem kind of the same with slightly different tones. And no mats, you know. I'm not going to swatch this for you. It's not new. What I'm seeing on camera is very close to what it is. And she said it was very special because of this. But the more I think about this shade right here, the more I think I have it in other palettes. For instance, the Natasha Denona, I think it's a five pan, the Coral palette has something like this. I think the Sunrise palette has something like this. And I think the Huda, one of the Huda nine pans has something like that. And I have done this video, this is my third time, because, because of the light. That's the way it goes with me. This is the last time I'm shooting it, so it better look good. But I have found that this color on me is very, very difficult. If you have darkness under your eyes, a color like this, which is very bruisey, will bring out the darkness under your eyes, because it's pretty much the same thing. So this is a no for me, which leads me to just using these three. I'm going to do a look that's just simple and fast and get you out of the house, and you can see what that is like, and I may make it a little bit darker, darker, before we leave. So I'm going to go in with this lightest tone, which looks a little different. It doesn't look all that light on the eye, and kind of do it all over. Before I get into it, I'm just going to use the Makeup by Mario primer and give the eyes a little bit of a chance, or give the shadow a little bit of chance. All right, I'm going to go in here and just do something very light around the socket and just a little bit higher. So it's just really a shading situation more than anything. Boom. I gave myself the teeniest bit of shape. You know, I had been thinking maybe this is a good one and done shade. You just sweep some on and you have a little something. But again, I do not care for this color on me. And it's not dark enough to give me a little lift. I need a little something here to pull everything up. And it's not doing that. But my next choice is this purple, which makes me look like death, or this dark brown. We're just going to do a little bit of this shade, and I'll show you what that looks like. It's quite, quite pretty. Eyes closed. It's a very, very, very pretty thing. I don't think it's actually that unique. I do think you can find things very, very similar. I didn't pull out those other palettes to compare for you, but uh, yeah. I, I just don't think it does anything for me. All right, let's move on. So Mel Thompson recommended this, and Michelle Wong recommended this. This is the under eye thing, Charlotte Tilbury. I have color two, medium, and I'm just gonna put up my hair because it's starting to get warm, or get into it. Before I start with the Charlotte Tilbury, I take a baby wipe, which are much better deals than makeup wipes. And I use them to, you know, do a quick clean of my brushes sometimes, or, uh, well, any number of things. I have gotten red lipstick in a white shirt before, and baby wipes do the trick. But I'm making sure that my fingers are absolutely clean, because <laughs> I don't want anything else under my eyes. And this is how I'm going to use this product. Your ring fingers are said to be your weakest finger. Swirl, swirl, swirl. This feels like a hard cream. So MAC has a concealer like this. Bobbi Brown is more emollient, more goopy. Round and round and round she goes. There's the color and transfer. My impression is, I've used this now three times, less is best. And I'm just going to kind of roll it in there. And I'm rolling it because I'm crepey. If you don't have any crepes, you can pat. But don't do this or swipe, because you're just going to move it from where you want it. And there's a little bit of difference. Yeah, <laughs> under this eye, 
is not it's not looking so hot now I did not have that experience before I did put some of my sunscreen under my eyes today but it's been on you guys for at least an hour so I'm just going to pat it but I'm trying to be cognizant of not moving it out of this zone emergency diverted now I've been doing something a little bit different with my concealer just over the past couple of weeks instead of going dot dot again less is best I put it on my hand so I'm just going to mix two colors it's a good way to get used to something that you're not using anymore I found that this one started to look very yellow on me that's a Giorgio Armani number four take these guys oh that's where my bronzer was okay kids <laughs> we'll pretend that didn't happen this is real life because I do have to go somewhere mix 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 now this dries pretty fast so move fast and then apply the same way just bounce this stuff in you're getting a lot less product and you are wasting but you know what I don't care because I have noticed lately when I put on my concealer oftentimes I'm thinking wow that's so light or that's so heavy or it's just not relating to the rest of the face and by the time I get to the end of the video my darkness is coming back so I thought this might be something to give a try and now I've spoken for maybe 30 seconds I'm going to go back in and just do a little bit more now this is nearly dry so it's hardly any product but I'm I'm testing the theory that very very thin layers might be better if you just have darkness that's very hard to conceal I'm not going to powder it but I did I did buy the Kosas powder again so the Kosas powder I really was impressed with how it looked and I had my nose was running and it got my brush got a little wet and then I went into here and that got a little wet and it just hard panned. I went in with a paper towel, whoosh, 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 and it was just a mess. And I thought, you know what? I can't. But Jamie Page, who I follow, keeps on talking about it. She did her review when I had already sent this pack. And she said, you know, you don't see it on the brush, but you do see the effects of it on your face. This is a baked formula, which is very tricky. I think a lot of people, when it's baked, they go for a harder bristle. So this is gray squirrel. They might go for goat, and they really go in. So you can see it on the brush and then apply it to the face. But I kind of like the idea of, I don't care if I see it on the brush. This brush is clean. I cleaned it last night. So I'm just putting it on one side. That's the side that it's on. That's the side that it's not on pretty hard to see but you can see the effect now I have used this several times and I am beginning to see a sheen right here and I think you can see that darkness I think it's gonna hard pan again and the reason I think it's hard panning again is because my sunscreens are so emollient so I'm just going to tap it on like that I'm not super, super shiny today, but this really looks nice on the pores. It really does. I'm not going to put any under the eye, but I am going to try to knock down on the forehead. I just want to pinpoint some shine and take the edge off it so the shine becomes more radiant in its nature. I'm still undecided about this, you guys, because I do see this kind of hard pan situation developing. And I think for me, it may not be avoidable. I had used a couple of sunscreens that are oil-based, and that could be the problem. But it's too late for me to tell. Do you know what I mean? Let's move on to blush. I did not get this blush from Sephora at the Sephora sale. I did get it at Hourglass because they had it first, but this is the color Loyal, which they describe as rosewood. This does not look like rosewood to me. To me, I mean, this is like wood, but there's no rose in here. Rosewood to me evokes kind of a mauve-ish kind of color. 
and we're just going around the edges and then you know kind of a generalized area here I don't think I don't think I really get any rows in this one but the color is very neutral and I personally don't have anything like it if you do maybe this isn't something you need but I don't so I feel like you know it's a good thing to have God forbid maybe I go on a date or something in the next decade and want to do a dark eye and something neutral on the cheek this color loyal might be very nice. I am going to do my brows and do mascara and maybe a little lining. We'll see and I'll come back and we'll talk about lips. All right, I did a little bit of tight lining or water lining, whatever you call it. And I did a little bit of mascara and I did my brows and we will go back into this palette and darken everything up for more evening look. But this is a daytime interpretation and I'm not in love with these colors. I've said it before, I'm saying it again. For lips, another thing that Michelle Long talked about, this is the Tom Ford and it's gold, but it turns a little more neutral, a little more peach, which you can see on the doe foot. So nothing on my lips. Gold. And now it's warming up a little bit. I think this is fun, you know. It's not, I feel like now my cheeks are kind of nude, my lips are kind of nude, but in a different way. And then my eyes are kind of just, I just hate them. I don't like this color story on me. It, I just feel dull. Um, I, I had to pick up something that fell on the floor. But when I did, I have a mirror right by my door, so the light, the sunlight is much stronger right there. And I thought, wow, it's really pretty in the sunlight. It is, it's, it's, it's pretty. The, well, except for the eyes. I'm not in love with the eyes, but let's do some more eyes. So I am going to go in with this color, which is a lovely brown, just, you know, kind of cool tone brown and I'm going to kind of do some shaping with it. So I'm going to put it where my socket would be if I had a socket. And then I'm going to pull it up a little bit here. And I'm touching it with the lightest of hands. And I feel like from eye to eye, this area just brings it up where the hood is pulling down. Even though I don't think these colors are good on me, I at least want to bring up my eyes a little bit. But, you know, my skin, like most women my age, it's not completely taut. It's not completely just flat. There's little bumps and stuff. And when I say bumps, I don't mean like bumps in a road kind of bumps, but waves of skin. And it doesn't blend that well into that. So you have to spend a good deal of time just blending your little heart out. And I am going to do that now. And honestly, you guys, I think that for me, for my eyes, for my skin, whatever, I found that it took me quite a while of blending with different brushes to really get it to a point where I liked it. Now, I could certainly go out like this, but I just kind of lately I've been wanting to step up my game a little bit instead of just here putting on makeup, like doing better. And I will say that I don't find that this adhered to my lid incredibly well. So by the end of the day, there was color, you know, but it wasn't precisely where I put it. And there wasn't much on the lid at all. When I used the Hindage colors, I felt like they did exactly what I wanted them to do. This does not. This is more moody. It's like I have to adjust to it instead of it adjusting to me. In other words, I'm doing what it's telling me what to do instead of it doing what I want it to do. Okay, I think I've just come to some conclusions about Tom Ford. Now, I think <laughs> this cheek and this lip, really good. The eye doesn't work, so I need to balance everything out. And I'm going to do a different lip color. Okay, I just did five minutes. Not quite five minutes, if I'm being honest. Doing a lip liner, trying to even everything out. Anyway, I'm going in with the I Need a Nude Amorosa. It came out with Natasha Denona's, I think it was a five pan, a couple of months ago. 
and I thought it was really too cool on me. I wasn't comfortable with it. But since this eye is really cool, I thought it might work a little bit better. And that's it. So again, this, I, I think it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's, could I live without it? Most definitely. Is it something I'm probably going to use a lot? Probably not. I do feel that this would be good at night. Like I said, an alternate to a nude lip that is a little easier to wear. This blush color, I really, really enjoy. I would say the formulation isn't all that stunning. It's um, pretty dry. It's not dry in, but if you have oily skin, I think you would be comfortable with this. But I don't have a color quite like this. I think it's fairly neutral and a good thing for me personally to have on hand. This has great potential, and I have to say, this is my third time putting it on, at least. And the first time I was like, yeah, I don't get it. But look, we're at the end of the video now, and I'm not seeing my darkness come through. Well, I am a little bit. I am getting a little bit of creasing, but I always do. So a little right there, because I do have a deep trough, or I am very puffy. Either way you look at it, it, it makes, it creates a trough. So I th I'm not sure, like now I'm feeling like I see some yellowness that I'm not in love with. So I, I do feel like there's more to investigate with this, is the yellowness the fact that I did my swatches on top of my bronzer, yeah, it's very possible. So that is worth investigating some more. That might actually end up being a pretty happy thing for me. This palette, I not only, like I said, they don't really do what you want them to do, and I don't like these colors on me, but I feel, I feel Tom Ford just keeps on proving to me that he and I are, are not a good match. We're not a match made in heaven. So I'm not in love with that. And the Kosas powder, I'm also really not sure about this because, well, I've already explained it to you. That shine right there, I think it's starting to hard pan. And I don't know if it's hard panning because I was wearing oil-based sunscreens and that was getting this wet. Or if because it's the powder. And like I said, if I had it over to do again, if I had a fresh one of these, I would be sure to use it with sunscreens that absorb into the skin that don't leave any kind of residue. I mean, all my sunscreens do, most of them do, but the ones I used this with were oil-based. It was the Biosance and the Say, which are both oil-based, and that seems to be making a problem. I just don't feel that I can give you a fair assessment of this, but Jamie Page swears by it. And she got the same kind of application, the same kind of look I did when I first got it. So I don't know. And that's, you know, another viewer told me hers hard panned. So I would be curious to know if hers hard panned because she was using a very emollient foundation or an oil based sunscreen. Maybe that's the common thread. I'm just not sure but I am sure of this. That's pretty much what I got at the Sephora sale. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope it was helpful, and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart. I'm wishing you good health.